Okay, so now we are actually going to use the container to run some software to change the, some files on our computer or create new ones in this case. So what do we want to do again? Well, we want to take this make file and create a nice dependency diagram showing how all of the scripts and data files depend and relate on each other to giving us the final report in the end of the analysis. So we're going to use some a tool called make file to graph to use this, but make file to graph is really annoying to install. So we're just going to use a Docker container to access that software instead. So let's go and do that now. So to remind us of what we were, uh, where we were at before, I have navigated into this directory on the terminal on my laptop, and now I'm going to run the make file to graph Docker container and mount um, the the uh, folder that I'm inside of to the Docker container so I can access my laptop's files and folders. So now we're ready to run Docker to have the makefile to graph program create this dependency diagram for us from our makefile. So we're going to run Docker and then run dash dash rm dash it and then dash v and then we're going to say dollar sign pwd and we're going to mount that's all basically where we are right now in the terminal on our computer. And then where would we like to mount this to in the container? I'm gonna put it in home and I'm gonna put it in data. I'm gonna make a folder called data analysis. Okay, and then I have to say, which image are we gonna create this container from? Ttimbers make file to graph. Let's see what happens. So we end up inside of the container and what I'm going to do is now navigate into um, the directory that contains the make file. So I'm going to go cd home and then into data analysis. And I'll take a look around and I can see that the make file exists. Now I can run from the, I've used this tool before so I know what commands to run. So I'm going to say make file to graph and I'm going to redirect that to um, make file dot dot. So this is basically saying, make file to graph, I'm gonna run you. It's gonna by default look for a file called make file, and it's gonna save, this is a redirect on the bash to create, in the bash shell to create a new file. And so it's gonna write the outputs of make file to graph to a file that I'm calling make file dot dot. And then I'm gonna say dot, which is the program that will make the graphic, t png, so I'd like a png file, um, from this make file dot dot that I had just written to and we're going to output it to a file that we're going to call make file dot png and if we type ls now we should see these two files that we created make file dot dot which specifies how to create the png and then make file png which is the graphic that we're actually interested in I can now navigate to my computer's file system go into here and double click on the PNG file. And then I have this graphic that says how all the raw data and the scripts are interacting with, the, with each other to create my all target, which is my doc count report .md file. So that's how we can create a make file uh, a dependency diagram using software that's not installed on our laptop, that's just installed inside of a Docker container. And now you all should be able to use Makefile to graph as well without having to go through the muss and fuss of installing it on your laptop by navigating to your project's root directory and running uh, this command to launch the Docker container, running a command to navigate into the right directory in the Docker container, and then make file to graph and output into a dot dot file and then using dot to make the image okay so no installation one docker pull one docker run and a few commands that you would have had to run anyways if you had the software installed lo locally and so things should be a lot less painful to create such a diagram okay so before we wrap up this video what i want to do is just review what the different docker commands we used did so we initially started using a command called docker pull and docker pull works like git pull and it downloads a docker image from docker hub just how like 
Git pull pulls code from GitHub to your local laptop. Docker images is useful to see what Docker images are available on your laptop. So you know if something was pulled correctly or if you have to go and do it again or if you've never pulled it before and you need to do that. Docker run launches a Docker container from a Docker image that you currently have on your laptop. Very interestingly and very conveniently, if you don't have a Docker image on your laptop and you type Docker run, it's not going to error out on you. The default behavior is that it's going to try and pull it for you first. This is really nice. Dash IT is a flag that you would use if you want to run the container interactively, which is what we just did to create our makefile dependency diagram. Uh, we don't always want to do it, but oftentimes when you're debugging, um, trying to build your own Docker files from scratch, um, this can be very useful. Dash dash RM is useful for keeping your computer's memory sane. Um, so it makes the container ephemeral, which means it deletes it upon exit. So you're not con you're not clogging up your computer's memory with a whole bunch of dangling containers. Dash V mounts the volume of your laptop to a Docker container. You have to specify the absolute path, like where on your laptop colon and then where on the container, as well as just applying the dash V flag to make this work. And then finally, really important, so you can get out of your Docker container, is exit. In the next lecture video, I'm going to show you how to um, use uh, Docker images that are more than bash shells. So ones that let us run uh, web apps that we're used to using um, for our data analysis, like our studio 